So when you take a look at this indictment of President Trump, and understand we don't know yet what is in the indictment, the possibility, as has been reported, that there are 34 charges against the former president. But we only knew about this so-called hush money payment thing. Isn't that why Michael Cohen went to jail? Or is that why he went to jail? And how does this relate to President Trump? And how do you take something that a multiplicity of legal experts has described as a misdemeanor and then push it into a felony? And then you have attorney, the district attorney of Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, who's brought these charges through the grand jury. You've got attorneys in his office saying, don't do this. So there's a couple of questions is what we're seeing from Alvin Bragg and from the Democrats, really from the Democrats, we should say it like that, legal, and is it legit? Guys, good to be with you. Welcome to the show presented by Americans for Prosperity, americansforprosperity.org, economic liberty, free speech. Let me bring in the man himself. That right there is William Jacobson, (laughs) Cornell Law Professor in the mind behind legal insurrection dot com legal insurrection.com you should go check it out and also check out what he's doing with the foundation the work he's doing with things like critical race theory i ask these questions because they're the top two right people who are junkies they've been paying attention people are like whoa whoa did they just indict trump they've got a whole nother series of questions so first let's get into your thoughts on the indictment comes Were you surprised? Were you shocked? What's your take on what you know thus far? Well, it wasn't a surprise in the sense that everybody's been talking for weeks, if not months now, about how it's moving towards an indictment. But when it actually happened, yes, I I actually was kind of shocked because it's a momentous uh, event in the history of the country where a politicized prosecutor, somebody who vowed to get Trump uh, during his campaign, is now actually following through on it. And so I think it's very worrisome, it's very troublesome. Uh, It's a a dark moment in our country where a a politically motivated prosecutor can try to interfere in an upcoming presidential election. So yes, in that sense, it was a surprise. As political as we know that Soros-backed prosecutors have become, it's still a shock when they actually do something like this. As to the indictment itself, Uh, We have to wait and see. We have to see what's in it. But if the leaks and the reporting by the New York Times and others is correct, this does seem like a very far-fetched theory that they're pursuing against Donald Trump. You're muted. Sorry about that, guys. My no, yeah, you were muted. And we unlike muted. Zoom, there was no way for me to message you. <laughs> so There's you nothing wrong. Again and somebody There's either. nothing wrong with saying Soros backed prosecutor. Absolutely nothing wrong with saying that, sir, because he is backed by George Soros. And when people say, when you say that, oh, that's anti Semitic, I'm just letting everybody know you can tell them your Jewish friend Tony said, no, 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 it's okay to say Soros backed prosecutor. But when you bring that up, that is to bring up the idea of where Alvin Bragg's politics really are, where they lie on the, on the spectrum. You said, talk about not being surprised. Uh, by the, the uh, this going forward, maybe a little amazed, not necessarily surprised. There is a, a difference in the thing. So let's break down these two bases, uh, two basics, as I call them. Is this legal? Is this something that the district attorney of Manhattan can do, whether it's the idea of charging a president uh, or, or a former president, or is it more of charging a former president like this? Well, I'm going to take you off track for a second and deal with the Soros-backed prosecutor issue. Um, I find it completely disgusting when people abuse the accusation of anti-Semitism, which is a very serious accusation, simply because people are stating a fact. George Soros backed a number of Democrat prosecutorial candidates. It was reported widely. He has bragged about it. George Soros found a weakness in our system, and that weakness in our system is that the vast power that prosecutors have has now been mobilized for political purposes. And that was his intention in funding all these prosecutors. Our system relies 
on the good faith of prosecutors because they have so much power, including the power to bring matters to a grand jury where the defendant doesn't get to present countervailing evidence, doesn't get to present opposing viewpoints. And so George Soros backed prosecutors have created enormous destruction in this country through non-prosecution of crimes, uh, Alvin Bragg being number one, he, on day one, he announced he was down, he would not prosecute a lot of crimes, including some violent crimes. So there is nothing wrong with saying Soros back prosecutor. Um, I use it in 2019, I was selected by Algeminer magazine as one of the top 100 people in the world positively influencing Jewish life. And I have no hesitation in saying that what George Soros has done is destructive and do not try to shut us up by making the false accusation of anti-Semitism. By the way, we should be clear, uh, I did not make the list and I consider that to be anti-Semitism. Is that not how it works? <laughs> is that not how it, is that? Let's get back to Alvin Bragg and really get yeah, into this totally. one-two punch. The question is, is, is it legal? the legality of it all? Uh, that will be ruled upon by a judge. This appears to be, assuming there's no surprises in the indictment, there's no crimes alleged unrelated to the payment to Stormy Daniels, assuming, as the New York Times and others have reported, this is all related to bookkeeping crimes, um, then a judge is going to have to rule on whether a local prosecutor, a county-level prosecutor, can turn stale, out-of-time misdemeanor charges into felonies that, uh, based on alleged violation of federal campaign laws, particularly where the federal government has investigated and chosen not to prosecute. So I think that there is a significant likelihood that if that is the basis for this indictment, that if not a state court, lower court trial judge, an appellate court will say, you can't do this, Alvin Bragg. You can't bootstrap something. We wouldn't allow you to do this to anybody else, and we're not going to allow you to do it just because you don't like Donald Trump. So I think the legality is suspect. Again, we've got to wait to see what's in the indictment, but I think there is a significant possibility that a judge will throw this out. Before we get into the, the concept of legitimacy, I, I, when I first heard that he was indicted, I was like, this is nuts. And then you start hearing reports that the indictment, which has not been uh, unsealed, may have like 20 charges. And then this morning it was hearing about how there might be 34 charges in the indictment. As you hear numbers like that, and again, I, I agree that, it, that it's speculative and I, and I appreciate your positioning that may people may be, you know, bothered by this. The legality of it is only determined by what we know about when the indictment is, is known to all. But as somebody who has gone through this, who has engaged uh, as a lawyer for a, a number of years, when you see 34 charges, does that seem to you like, wow, Bragg's got something here and is hitting it from every angle? Or, wow, Bragg's got nothing here, and he's just desperately trying to hit one fish in the barrel. Well, we don't know what the 34 charges are. It right. could be that there were 34 pieces of paper or 34 computer entries all related to the same payment, and he's choosing as a publicity stunt to charge them in 34 separate counts as opposed to a single count. We don't know that. So the mere number of 34 seems to me like, a publicity stunt. Okay, so so the, uh, just just to interrupt, uh, that that was it. Like for a lot of people, you hear thirty four, and you're like, oh my gosh, what do they have? You're saying it could be thirty four charges on the same thing to make it sound like a big thing. Exactly. Each entry, in theory, that was improper, in theory, uh, could be a separate count. Okay, they could say, you know, on whatever the date was, you know, July one, whatever the year. And then again on July 2, and then again on July 3. So we don't know, but that's what's so troublesome is that the leaks about these things are meant to generate headlines. They're meant to have a, a political impact. And that's just another indication that uh, what Alvin Bragg is up to here is politics. And, and there's every indication of that from his prior public statements, from the fact that prior district attorneys in New York and Manhattan looked at this and chose not to prosecute. He sat on it for a number of years, for the two years that he's been in office. So everything about this smells really bad 
particularly why are you doing it now? Why didn't you do it a year ago? Why didn't you do it 18 months ago? Why are you doing it now why? when Donald Trump has finally declared as a candidate? And the question is, if he had not declared as a candidate, would these charges have been brought? And, and I think the answer about, is no. How about the concept of the feds? Talking to William Jacobson of Legal Insurrection. Dot com Cornell law professor check out his work at legalinsurrection.com wasn't this a case that federal prosecutors said you know what we hate Trump we think he's the worst we would like to talk bad about him all day long but we ain't got nothing here wasn't that the case just a couple of years ago well I don't know that they issued a pronouncement exonerating him but they did look at it they did investigate it and so and decided did, not to go forward that's my that's point. right and they decided not to go forward so, uh, which is powerful proof because you, the feds could, if there was a federal election law violation, you would expect the federal government to be prosecuting it, not the district attorney in Manhattan. Uh, this is just an attempt to get Trump. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. Whether it holds up in court, I think there's a better than 50-50 chance that if what we believe it to be is what it turns out to be, a judge will say, you can't do this. You, you're too late. You should have done this five years ago. Walk down a bit of this legal thought process with me and tell me if I'm right or wrong. The attorney general of the state of New York, Letitia James, ran. Her campaign was predicated on the indictment of Donald Trump. That, it, it, we understand that to be true. She absolutely did that. Is there amongst betw between an attorney general and a DA, like if you and I were both in the concrete business and we decided to say, hey, we're going to charge $7 a yard or $2 a yard or whatever it is, that would be considered collusion. Is there anything amongst the, within the legal world that Letitia James could have applied pressure to Alvin Bragg, you have to get this done? Or is it two people who were elected into office uh, who simply could talk about these things and there is no legal issue therein? Well, there's probably no legal defense there that if it's true that Letitia James' office spoke to Alvin Bragg's office. I, the, the charges are the charges. They will right. either stand up legally, but what motivated them, I'm not sure, is a, a legal defense. Uh, but it goes to a bigger issue. Is This is a, a deeply blue state with uh, politicized, weaponized prosecutors who go after political opponents. Letitia James was even worse in her campaign than Alvin Bragg. Letitia James said the entire reason she's running for office is not just to get Donald Trump, but to get his businesses and his family. And she seems to be pursuing that, although she hasn't brought criminal charges. This is a complete corruption of the power of the state that lies in the hands of prosecutors. This system that we have relies on some measure of good faith in prosecutors. And we know that there are malicious prosecutions. We know this is not the first time a prosecutor has, has been politically corrupted. But the fact that it's taking place as to a former president, as we're in the early stages of primary season, makes it so much worse. Why didn't Alvin Bragg do this six months ago before Donald Trump declared his campaign for president? He could have done it. And to that point, when you talk about what it does, we heard reports that there were assistant district attorneys in Alvin Bragg's office saying, don't do this. Do you expect to see a slew of resignations in the next 48 hours of people saying, yeah, I'm out. I, I'm an actual lawyer. This is nuts. No, I don't expect to see a slew of resignations, but I'm hoping there will be one person in that office who will do the right thing and come forward as a whistleblower and blow the whistle on what happened and reveal those consultations, because this is, by all appearances, not a proper prosecution. This is, by all appearances, a political prosecution. And somebody in that office needs to step up and reveal what went on behind the scenes. I don't think there's any privilege to that, but they certainly could invoke various whistleblower laws. They could cooperate with Congress. They could cooperate, perhaps, with other prosecutors if there is something that unfounded and untoward went on in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Somebody needs to step up and reveal why this is being done at this time to this person that is so impactful on our nation and on our presidential election. Really quick, uh, be, 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 because I'm, I'm up uh, against it. William Jacobson, Cornell Law Professor, LegalInsurrection.com. Th there came this question. If the charges don't stick, 
do you think it'll boost Trump's chances for election? It's a political question. Um, but uh, is is as you see it, could you play politically? You think this is a gift to Trump or you think this is a problem? Well, in the moment, in the short term, it's certainly going to help Trump's chances of winning the Republican nomination. I think by all accounts, he was the leading candidate, but we really hadn't started the primaries. But I don't think you can predict what the longer term impact is going to be. I don't think you can say, what's it going to be in eight months from now? Depends what happens with these charges. Depends if other charges are brought by other prosecutors. And it depends whether Republican voters want to have this be the issue going into a general election. You know, I think the notion that a lot of people on my website and in you know, conservative world that, oh, this is a guarantee that Trump's going to be the next president. I'm sorry, that that's just not the case. You live in a bubble. We live in a bubble. And outside that bubble, people are deeply suspicious of Donald Trump, deep dislike of Donald Trump. He has never won the popular vote in the country. He barely eked by in 2016. So the notion that Donald Trump being maliciously charged is going to win him the presidency, I think is wrong. I think there's two levels of manipulation going on here. One is the manipulation by the prosecutor. The other part is Democrats, I think, are thrilled about this. They want Trump to be the nominee. They want to go into a general election with all these criminal charges pending yeah. against the Republican nominee. And yes, it will solidify some part of the Republican base, but I think people are deluding themselves if they think this is going to win a general election for Donald Trump. There's a difference between a primary and a general. That's the point. William Jacobson, Cornell Law Professor, the mind behind LegalInsurrection.com. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us. And thank you all for watching the show presented by Americans for Prosperity, AmericansForProsperity.org, Economic Liberty, Liberty. There we go, Tony. Free speech. It's all the good stuff. And don't forget to subscribe on Rumble, rumble.com slash Tony Katz. Subscribe, subscribe. Do it right now. I'll catch you very soon, guys. Take care.